Eight on UPN 30. Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans. It's a long halftime because it's homecoming, and that means that both those teams want to get back on. 8-6, and it's been a while, so they're sitting back, simmering in the locker room, saying, let's get this stuff over. Let's get back on and finish this football. Hi again atop the Superdome. I'm Dave Wilotion, along with Matt Dillon. If you're Rip Shearer, what have you told your football team? And how do you get your offensive line bolstered back with confidence after really the, the, their inability to move the ball one yard on two plays has cost that team a lead? You've got to talk about positives, and Rip Shearer is a positive type coach, but really the Tigers have moved the football in this first half. You've got to go back to the positive and say, look, we've moved the football. We get correct a couple of mistakes. Nothing big. We can put the ball in the end zone. These guys can't stop us. All you got to do is fire up the line and, and move the football. That's all he has to do. He's also saying, guys, the only way we get beat is if we beat ourselves. Some untimely penalties again shot Memphis in the foot. Rip Shearer talked about it the off week, and he said he'd like to have a win coming out the off week. But unfortunately, the Tigers came off a loss. And, but you can see improvement, although there were some mistakes. But again, mental mistakes stop them against Louisville. They have to be corrected in this second half. If they're not, it's going to be a long second half of the Tiger offense. And now, if you're Buddy Tevens, I, I suppose you play on the other side. You, you had that first great drive, and you've not done much since with the exception of two things. One, you made that great defensive stand twice, and the other is you made a big blitzing play that the, the cornerback makes to take Memphis out of field goal position to end this half, and so you've kept the lead, and that's got to give you some momentum. It certainly does. I play a lot of people, which he did in the first half on defense, try to keep fresh troops in. He likes to blitz a lot. Likes to keep pressure on Joe Borch, but offensively, I got to go back, Dave, and run the football. I think D'Artez is a great running back. He's a very versatile back. He can do a lot of things. Run the football, which I did early in the football game. If you remember in the drive, that was the key, the early drive of Tulane, running the football. Since you bring up the keys, let's go back to those keys for just a second and see how are they doing in that regard. Well, one of the things we said was Memphis had to establish a running game, and they did that. Quitman Spalding had close to 60 yards in the first half. He did have a good first half, and he ran hard in the first half. And I'll tell you what, Boo Blevins, Dave, he's the guy that really established a running game from that fullback position. The lead block to spring Spalding. And if Spalding, as you talked about, if he gets confidence, he's some kind of back. And he's got to hold on to the football. That's been his problem so far this season. If you look at these keys, Memphis did one of two, and Tulane did both. Their poised freshman players played well. Their defensive front did the job when they had to. Memphis got that running game. It was the penalties, shooting yourself in the foot and not coming up with the big play when you had the opportunity that cost the Tigers the opportunity to take the lead at the half. But you got to feel good, Dave, because the offense, although we talked about made mistakes, did move the football a couple of games. The Tigers didn't do that, especially games like Michigan and southwestern Louisiana. They did move the football. If the Tigers can ever get the lead. I think that's the real key here. If they get in front and really get some confidence, it's going to be a good second half. We're close to the second half. We'll come back and show you stats and highlights when we return to the Superdome in just a moment. Come on, baby, let the two times roll. Come on, baby, let the two times roll. It's a very difficult skill to master. You might want to practice on a spare piece of wood. Right. That's good advice. I'll give you more good advice. Always think safety when working with a spinning lathe. You notice I didn't wear a necktie. We got a lot of letters about this one. Nothing hanging out and no loose clothing. Possibility. Home Improvement. Weeknights at 6.30 on UPN 30. On July 8, 1947, something crash-landed in Roswell, New Mexico. 48 years later, the impact is still being felt. I know what I saw, and it was not from this world. Was it an extraterrestrial? I saw the bodies. Was there a military conspiracy? I don't know what you're talking about. The hell you don't. If you saw Alien Autopsy on Fox, you already know the questions. You have nothing. Now, UPN has the answers. Roswell, the UFO cover-up. Monday night at 7 on UPN 30. We welcome you back to the Superdome, moments away from the second half kickoff. Tulane again up by two points and maybe a little bit of momentum to start the third quarter as the Tigers' special teams rally around. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. And it began with Sean King. He drew blood first. 
time it's Cortez who found the opening and in he went. Cortez is really versatile back for a freshman. He's got a kind of a nose for the goal line and put it in. And here he sees a surge coming up by the University of Memphis line. A quarterback sneak by Joe Borch for the Tiger touchdown in the first half. Big Ken Newton, the guy that led the way for the offensive line. And here's the sack. Yeah. That's the play that killed Memphis to end the second half. And they got lucky, frankly, that they came up with the ball because Tulane might have had a shot at getting some extra points on the board. You look at the staff where they almost even or so. Negative yardage because Quitman Spalling has close to 60 yards and the Tigers with nine more yards. First downs by a couple turnovers or even time of possession slightly to Tulane. You got to like the numbers though, Dave, when you look at it, 149 total yards for the Tigers. And if they have that in the second half, that will be over actually the Tiger average on the year. And, and again, a chance with Quitman Spalling, especially to run the football. If you rip shear, you got to be positive. And this is a big football game, Dave, because any chance probably for a Liberty Bowl bid and a winning season, it takes a victory tonight in the Superdome. Well, frankly, Memphis is two and a half games at one and four to the Southern Miss four well, and two. A lot two. of people lost today, which helped. Yeah. The Green Wave at two and three are only a game and a half. If they win this, they're three and three. They're really right back in the picture for the Liberty Bowl. Memphis still a long shot, but stays in, hangs in on that picture. This is a big game in terms of any opportunity for postseason for both these football teams. Tigers will get the ball. And here's Ryan Rosskiller on a kick return. And this will be the best field position off a kickoff for the Tigers tonight. To the 30-yard line, they'll take over first and 10. Pat Miller made the stop on the special teams on Ryan Ross Kelly. Ryan Ross Kelly, a jack of all trades, and he's running kickoffs back tonight. Of course, the Tigers had Spalding back against Louisville running kicks, but tonight, uh, Ryan Ross Kelly doing it all. And I still got a feeling, Dave, he's going to have a big play before this game's over. The numbers on board, he needs to complete one pass of a yard, and he'll have four straight 100-yard games. So he is getting better as the year goes on. A quick little delay to Spalding. He'll get four yards to the 34. Stopped there by the linebacker, Monty Burke. Tigers come out running the football, trying to establish a running game to start this second half. And, and if you're on the road, Dave, you like to establish that, watch the left side of the Tiger line. Right there is the hole and a nice nifty move by it's, uh, Frankie Fletcher. Frankie Fletcher, you're yeah. right. Surprise start of the second half. We thought we'd see Sean Sands. We haven't seen him yet. Boric, there's a nifty fake play, and he's going long, looking for Brian Colley over through everybody, and he threw in the triple coverage. Ross Kelly was wide open on the other side and that was just a bad decision by Joe Boric. You almost wonder when you see four guys on one side with one receiver and the other wide open if there wasn't somehow a mix-up by one of the receivers. One of the receivers run the run route, and uh, what he did, he actually threw to where the guy was going to be, and nobody in the picture except three two-lane defensive backs. That's a timing pattern, and, and Boric just put it up where he's supposed to be, and another mental mistake. Third down and six. Hey, two of six is good for this team. 17%. They were coming in. Boric better get away. Boric can't. And there's the second sack of the game for Tulane. It was Keith Cook who did it. That's the fourth sack this year for the junior who was a preseason all independent. He's probably the best defensive lineman for the two-lane green wave and actually got away and shucked the lineman there. Got away from Settler. He just threw him around with a sack. Conglin has to punt it away. And it takes a semi-tiger roll down at the 42. So three plays and out Memphis on their first possession. And some discussion with the brain trust on what went wrong. Ripshire, though, keeping a positive attitude. He has to encourage this young football team to hang in there when you're on the road. you got to say, look, guys, we're going to get it next time down. He's going to come over, talk to some of the coaches, say, we're going to do it. Just be patient. It's going to all work out. King's numbers, not bad at all. They just want to groom this kid. Don't make mistakes. Figures he'll let some other players beat that team. Here's a little throw to... D'Artez in the flat, makes a nice move on Bonner, and finally Chris Smith caught up with him. 
But they pick up nine yards on the play to midfield. Great field position for Tulane to start. And you know, the Tigers had decent field position, but that was not a great punt by Coglin. Jamaican and D'Artez, we talked about his versatility. Just a little swing pass out of the backfield. And here's a missed tackle. You got to close down and tackle a guy. You missed him right there. There's another four to five yards for Tulane on the missed tackle. Well, and, and to be truthful now, Dan Bonner doesn't miss too many, the senior from Oak Park. 30 yards for D'Artez. That's well below what he normally would do. Nice to juke there and kind of lost his feet. He's shy of the first down. It'll be third down and one coming. Well, maybe Memphis can repay Tulane. Tigers had a couple of times in deeper territory than this. This is right on the 50. They were about the 32 or 31 yard line of Tulane when they couldn't get the first out on third and fourth and one. And this is where your defense can send a message. Go to a tight defense and snuff out that first down opportunity. Well, there's about seven across. And D'Artez didn't get it. Well, or maybe he did. He squeaked out and he, I uh, believe, did get it. I it's thought like he was... a friendly spot for Yeah, Jelani. well, I thought he, he was stopped, but he did squeeze out. That's a tough play by the freshman. you got to be impressed with him. You really do. So the Tigers go to a goal line defense, and Tulane had the opportunity there and punched out the first down, and they're in Tiger territory across midfield. Artez had 150 yards, 154 to be exact, against Rice. Here he is again, right up the middle. Oh, that offensive line now moving the Memphis defensive front right out of the way. Green wave to a double tight end set that time. Uh, they use a lot of multiple formations, but when they run the football, they'll bring out other tight end and just ram that football forward. And especially with a young football team, a young quarterback, a young running back, it's a safe play and something smart to do until you stop it. Seven yards, he did it up the gut, took the free safety key span to come up and stop it. And when, when that's happening, you got problems. Artez, nice move, short of the first down. It'll again be third and short yardage. Marvin Thomas made the stop that time. He's a the, the darting kind of a runner who's pretty to watch. So just be shy, a third and about a half a yard. And again, the Tigers are going to go to a goal line type defense, a short yardage situation. And Tulane has a couple of options here. They can put the football in the air if they like, but I got a feeling they're going to try to power it out of this eye. Martez, the best freshman running back since 1977 here. A guy named Reggie Reginelli. It's Dartez again. He got the first down again at the Memphis 37-yard line. He just found the little hole, squeezed right through it, made sure he got to it, and then went down. When you're in trouble, where do you go? You go to your best side of your line, and that's the left side of the two-lane defense, or offensive line, rather. That's Schuler and Hunter, and, and D'Artez just snuck it in there, and Tulane looks like a player might be down for the green wave, eh? That's where their weight is, too. Schuler at 290-something, and Hunter over 300 pounds. Bonner made the stop, but not before. They got the first down. We take a quick timeout, 10-28, left to go third quarter. Tulane on the move. So what you think? I believe we've made our great tasting brine hot dog even better. It's beefier now, juicier, spiced just the way you like it. In fact, I don't think you'll find a better tasting hot dog anywhere. But I want to know what you think. So try our new brine juicy jumbos and give me a call. Let me know if you like our new juicy jumbos as much as I do. I looked for you Saturns in the one ads, and I had a hard time finding one. Because Saturns hold their value as well as they hold the whole string quartet, a queen-size futon. My surfboard. One of those big, huge, antique bureaus. What drove me to Saturn? No pun intended. Was the low cost of ownership. The only reason I sold my Saturn was because I got so much for it. I've even sold one to a friend. And he's still a friend. The 1996 Saturn SL at your local Saturn retailer and sometimes in your local paper. There are four Saturns in our family. There are smiles on the Tulane Green Wave side here at the Superdome. Homecoming and their team up by a safety 8-6. Well, two points anyway. I don't know if we're going to see a safety, although you could. It's been a defensive effort, and carried off the field is Tom Jackson. 
Junior from Baton Rouge, the center, who was just making his third start, replacing a more veteran, more experienced offensive lineman, and that's going to mean Danny Metzger, who's a backup guard, is going to have to play some center. And here's the injury. You see some players coming in. Oh, bends his knee back yeah. on the Tigers oh, hitting. Oh, gosh. And he's obviously, you can see, going down in pain, but he is well, walking that's, around. That's that is a great a good sign, sign right there. Good point, Dave. Danny Metzger has to come over from guard to play center for Tulane. He plays both positions. See how this exchange is perfect. And Sean King threw it away. Jerome Woods, his fourth interception of the year. There's a flag on the play as Woods hurdles a man to the 46-yard line, and out he goes. Oh, my. What a play by Woods. We'll see what the flag is all about. There was a hurry on Sean King. The Tigers blitzed, and I, I didn't quite see who got through, but it forced a bad pass. Great defensive work by the Tigers. Jerome Woods, does he have a knack for the football or what? He's a guy that's going to be around that football every time something happens. The flag is going to be the big call here. Let's see which way it goes. That's the sixth interception of the year for the Tigers. Four by Woods, two by Keith Spann, if this thing holds up. Let's listen to Tommy Taylor. Said Memphis, yeah, he, he did. pointed the other way, but look at the pressure right there. King has to get rid of it right to Jerome Williams, and look at the athletic ability of Jerome Woods. It looks like an Olympic hurdler here, Dave, on the end of the play, going up and getting about two what or a, three more yards or going out of bounds, and there's the late hit by Tulane. What an athletic play by Woods. That's why he'll be playing on Sundays. Is Bill Clinton calling him already? <laughs> He's, he's happy about it. He's, he's talking about that jump. You know he's not talking about the interception. He's talking, he's did talking you see the way I got up? I jumped. Yeah. Here comes Frankie Fletcher in a hurry. They have not played quick with Spalding here, I don't believe, in the second half after that fine first half. And Frankie cuts off tackle and ran into Terrence Cook, the defensive tackle. Got to wonder, Dave, Spalding may be nicked up or something to start the second half. Did he take a blow or something? Not in there. As you said, had a good first half, but the Tigers a chance here to do something after the turnover. you got to take advantage of situations like this. Sean King, his fourth interception. He's watching. Here's play action. And, oh, it's a delay. And Fletcher got it inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. It'll set up third down and four. Actually, it'll, they're going to spot it at the 34. Tigers taking advantage of the stunt here by Tulane and some misdirection, but watch Williams come from the linebacker yeah, he spot. He job. is so quick to close it off. That could have been a big gainer for the University of Memphis, but Brian Williams, the sophomore, snuffed it out for Tulane. Well, there's Dr. Q. He's just standing on the sideline. He's okay. Third and five. gets it away. Oh, that's a dangerous pass at the 30-yard line. The spot will be critical. If they give that spot at the 29, it's a first down. If they spot it at the 30, it sets a fourth down. And look at the generous spot the Tigers got this time. And Fletcher made a big play. He knew he was going to get killed, and he stood in there and took the punishment. Joe Borch got rid of the football under extreme pressure. And there's the senior with some, some leadership ability. He recognized it, got rid of it. And Dave, this is going to be a critical spot very close to the first down. Watch Boris get the pass off and under heavy traffic is he got rid of it and what a strike. Had some mustard on the football and the way he threw it, it's a wonder the pass got there that quickly. Well, he was in the hands of Shane Marshall, their lead tackler on the defensive line. And you saw the way they went from Boric to Fletcher, and that's how the pass worked out. So it's a foot short, and the Tigers, 0 for 1 on fourth down conversion tonight, will go for it again. This is about where they missed it the last time. Ball sitting on the 29-yard line, 8.30 to go in the third quarter. The Tigers are down by two. Boric sneaks it ahead. He got it. No question about it. 
Really a safe play by Ripshear there. Just go straight ahead. You go between a gap and fall forward for the first down. And the Tigers are now in business. And Dave, it's good to see using some clocks, keeping that Tiger defense off the field. And, and, and Tulane, a smaller defense. Will it work for the Tigers' advantage in the fourth quarter? Maybe to wear them down just a bit. And that's Rip's thinking, and Buddy Tiefen, he looked like he was praying. Let's get this game moving. Let's see if my defense can come up with a big play. Borich on the first and ten. Little option, and Fletcher tries to turn the corner. Not much there. Good defense by Tulane. They pursued well, and uh, Tellius Carr, the corner, came up and made a nice play on Fletcher. Your linebacker against that option. Oh, you got to take that pitch, man. As you see the crash there, and the linebacker not out to get the pitch, man. There he is right there, too late. It's a nice gain down the field for the University of Memphis. Pick up of three. Frank Fletcher still not 100%, I don't think, from the knee injury he suffered in spring. And he did the same thing the year before, and it took him a while before he really regained full speed. I'm not sure he's back at 100%. Well, player with a lot of heart and guts yep. and determination. No doubt about that. Seven and a half to go in the third quarter. Borch time. Finds his man underneath again. It's Frankie Fletcher. That's the second time in a row they've run that play. Derek Singleton, the linebacker, made the stop. Tigers do the same thing that Tulane does, like the throw to the backs out of the backfield. And as Borch looked around, nothing happening. Well, he knows he's got a safety valve. And you watch him look around. Borch gets back, sets up well. That's the real key to this. He looks around, nothing happening. Okay, I've got the back. Got to get it to him. Had a nifty, nice gain against the linebacker for the University of Memphis. I think that's his third read, and give Borich credit for taking what the defense gave. Singleton, by the way, is a former quarterback. Did you know that? Who came in and made the stop. It's how he started at Tulane, but that's not how he finished. And a little Utah pass doesn't go anywhere. Fletcher trying, and he was stopped cold. And that's just a great play by Dennis O'Sullivan. And then Elijah Freeman came in and helped out and led in the cheerleading. <laughs> Dennis O'Sullivan, the big freshman out of New York. They didn't fool him at all. He was in correct position right there for the tackle. As Borch, you get to see the little shovel pass. And watch O'Sullivan. Boom, Ooh, he got boy. away from Settler. Yeah. Settler actually turned around and lost him. That's what happened on the block there. You know what? One block, and that's going to go a ways. It didn't, though. So Paramore comes on for a 41-yarder. He is one for four from this distance this year. That snap was a little low. It's on the way, and it is good. And Memphis leads for the first time in the game. Six minutes left to go, third quarter, and the Tigers jump on top of Tulane by a point, nine to eight. To lease or to buy. I sure didn't know. I mean, there are so many options these days, it's hard to know what to do. Thank oh, goodness. Pig's busting out all over the place. Now, Piggly Wiggly is everywhere. More stores, more places to save big. No matter where you live, you'll always be near a Piggly Wiggly store. Double coupons every day, prices that can't be beat. The Pig's busting out all over town. A good way to tell the quality of a product is to see who uses it. Our new Mapco Express 93 octane super premium is another example of our commitment to quality. It's a gasoline that gives your car a winning edge, and it's made right here in Tennessee. So the next time you're looking for a pump to pull up to, remember it pulls up to ours. And like all our products, Mapco Express is guaranteed right every time. Welcome you back to the Superdome in New Orleans. Dave Willotion, Matt Dillon, hoping you enjoy this. The Tigers trailed 8 nothing right off the bat, but they've come back to take a 9-8 lead. Still plenty of time, though, in this game. Six minutes left to go in the third queue. And they've got the lead, which is something we talked about at halftime. Coach here, as we said, said, guys, look, you've got plenty of time. Don't get in a hurry. We're going to get the lead. And now the Tigers have the lead. And you turn it over to your defense. Can they come up with a big stop? The pressure back to Tulane. And their young players, can they move? the football that's the question yeah and, and you said earlier you fall behind what does a young team do do they lose poise do they keep it we'll we'll find out in an important alliance game southern miss and cincinnati playing and cincinnati lead leads over southern miss 7-3 that one at the half that was a while ago here's the return by ligan and ligan gets the ball to the 23 i'll tell you what the kickoff return team or re 
return containment team has done a great job this year. Well, guess They're, who's down there? Who do you think? Jerome Woods. Jerome Woods. <laughs> Eight plays, 15 yards, four minutes and one second, and Paramore for the second time this year, over 40 yards, 41 to be exact, and the first U of M lead. Two and seven over the years between Tulane and Memphis. That's what the Tigers have been down here in New Orleans. This, by the way, is the 18th meeting in the series tied at 8-8-1. Eight, eight and one. It's the last time they'll play as independents. Sean King, and there's a flag, might be a late hit. Jerome Woods came over, got some help from Britton Wilkins, and Woods is clapping like this one's going against Tulane. King just tried to roll out, picked up a yard, and that was it. Straight quarterback keeper. He just rolled out in a big holding call, as you see. That's going to back Tulane up inside their 20-yard line. Even further. Rip saying, are we going to make it second and nine, or are we going to back them up and make it first and 19? He's asking exactly where the hold took place because you're going to back it up 10 yards from the spot of the infraction. That's correct. It's going to be back inside the 20-yard line. Illegal block. Now down to the 13-yard line. First down from there. And what this does, it takes a lot of options away from that two-lane offense. You're back in the shadow of your goal post. You put the ball in the air. They're going to a slot formation. This is a passing sequence. Let's see if they do it. First and 19. Only one back behind Sean King. And he got killed before he could let it go. Back at the nine, the second sack in the game. And there were three Tigers who were on hand for that one. But give credit either to Marvin freshman. Thomas or was it T.J. Fryer? And Santa Benez also. Or at Santa Benez, you're right. And Tulane did put the football in the air, Dave. They, they went to the pass, and you'll see the Tigers' defensive line and linebackers really close. Look at Santa yeah. Benez coming all the way across the field with help also. Well, the Tigers' big other defensive end, Mr. Mason, in there to put a knock on him. Santa Benez just came like from out of nowhere, second and 23. They lost four on that one. And Jamaican D'Artez might not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. He's back down by the nine. That's a loss of another yard. They're going backwards. Richard Hogan's came in and put the stops on the freshman. And you can see what getting the lead does for your football team. This defense really fired up, really coming out crisply. Tiger's going to make a change in the secondary. As Cobb's going to come in in a passing situation. Look at Boric and Shearer discussing what's about to happen as long as the defense can make one more play here. Third down and 23. Downfield long. It's picked off. Oh, my. It's caught. Oh, what an unbelievable bad break for the Tigers. And what a great catch by the Tulane wide receiver, Eric Alleman. I mean to tell you, I think two Tigers touched that football and Alleman came up with it. There's just nothing you can do, and that's, again, the trip drill that a lot of coaches do from when you're way down at Pee Wee football. The ball was tipped in the air, and Tulane made the big play, and it had to be a big play coming out of the shadow of the goalpost, but Alleman, watch the concentration on him, Davis. Two Tigers are right there in good position. There's the tip, and you see it, and he's going to reach out and take it and cradle the football, the old tip drill. Oh, that's just amazing. His fourth catch this year, the kid from Thibodeau. That one nearly picked off, too. Good defense by Sutton and Jerome Woods, and there's Wilkins again. Boy, Britton Wilkins is having a heck of a game tonight. He certainly is, and that was a big question with Jesse Allen being out. And, and also, uh, you got to think about the Tigers secondary. Jerome Woods having an excellent game tonight, and Tulane's receivers know they're going to get hit when they catch that football. Oh, I know the Tigers, even if they hold here, they lost some field position on that great play by Allen. No cushion at all by the DBs this time. Everybody close, and here come the Tigers. No flag, and there's a fumble. If that play is complete, it is. That'll be a loss of two or three yards. The Tigers brought everybody. And I mean everybody on that play. When you come with a blitz, you know your guys at the secondary have man-on-man -man coverage, and guys like Jerome Woods have the ability to have cover one in the man-on-man -man coverage, and 
Watch the pressure on King, licking off to his left, and just boom, the hit. Almond lost the football and almost recovered there by the Tigers as Hogan just couldn't quite get there in time. Third and 11. Other than the one big play where they were fortunate. Tulane's offense has sputtered. Here comes pressure again, thrown, and they got their man. That was Derek Franklin, his second catch of the game.